Hello, this is Jim. I got some requests here for the uh, to get into detail about the dust collection. And basically, what I found is uh, the most common gate would be this kind of blast gate. This is a uh, well back in the day it was six bucks. And if you can see, it doesn't close all the way. See that gap right there? And that's because it's a uh, that's because it's a really a cheap gate. Uh, the grooves that are in there that allow that gate to go fully closed over time sawdust will build up in those cavities uh, you can't really see it on the camera but there's a separation where this gate will slide in a groove and then uh, dust just gets built up in there and then that gate will never close all the way and you're just losing all that all that uh, CFM so uh, Sometimes what I had to do was uh, get in there with a with a pick or a screwdriver and try to dig that out of there, and that's not something you want to do. You you really want to just set it up and not have to really do maintenance to it at all. So uh, my solution to that was I found this in an article somewhere. I can't remember uh, what magazine it was in, but uh, this is this is my solution to it, which is a very good a very good solution, I think. Um, just homemade, homemade uh, blast gates, dust collection gates. Uh, the only drawback is when you close that gate, you're dealing with an extra, you know, say four inches that you. Uh, so if you're putting this against a wall, it's very difficult to hide that. To hide that. Whereas these, these kind here, they don't you have to worry about it, but they're junk gates. Uh, this one is actually one of the rejects. That's why it looks so good because I never used it because this was the first one I did where uh, I didn't gap out. It's all done with quarter inch plywood and you really want to have some kind of a shim for this little spacer piece right here. And you want to just shim some kind of a gap between these two fold pieces so that this gate does have some kind of play in it so you can slide it relatively easy. You can see how hard it is right now to try to, try to move it. Um, so basically all it is you want a circle cut you're gonna get these are roughly I don't know six seven inches about six and uh, six and seven eighths I'll just call it seven inches so seven inches probably square seven inches square um, and then you get your circle cutter out get your uh, trusty circle cutter and you just go ahead and you just bore out that circle and uh, you, if you're using 4 inch PVC you just gotta remember that PVC, 4 inch PVC is, is the pipe is 4 inch but the fittings are a little bit, little bit wider so when you're doing your circle cut you just gotta make sure you're you're trying to go a little bit, a little bit w wider of a cut so that you can fit this coupler inside that, inside that cavity and actually all you do is take some construction adhesive, uh, liquid nails I guess in this case, and you just run a bead around it and let it dry and uh, it's pretty pretty damn solid. Uh, but that's, that's what I use. You know, and of course you don't want to push them all the way in because you have to leave that clearance. If you can see you've got to leave that clearance for that gate to slide. Um, that's pretty much it. And then of course when you're all finished you end up with all your, all your discs which woodworkers we keep every bit of scrap we got. I don't know what the hell I'm going to use these for but I don't know I've been hanging out of these for a long time but anyway we keep scraps like they're gold. Uh, also I think you can get these I think these might have been from a woodworker store for actual uh, dust collection pipe. I don't think I got these at a Home Depot or Lowe's I can't remember though, but these are exactly four, they're exactly four inch. So that'll give you a good, a good clamp surface there. I think they're just called four inch dust collection clamps or so, I don't know. But uh, these are good for when you're going against the walls and you gotta mount your pipe to whatever. So basically, your four inch coupler, four inch pipe, fits right in there. And then you got your gate. And uh, you gotta make it, you gotta gap it out a little bit wider than what you need. 
I think they say, I think I used a business card or something like that. And I just cut it with a razor blade and that would, that would give me a little bit thicker uh, clearance so that this baby will ride smooth. It's okay now, but even with the humidity, it gets tough, and you don't want to be messing around fighting with a with a gate if you're in the middle of a project. Uh, give yourself a little bit of a, a little bit of a finger catch here to pull it. You know, it makes it a little bit easier. Pull it, push it, whatever. And then uh, my blast gates over here for the uh, radials. Uh, what I ended up doing was. I started off with a line because I figured that would give me a visual of where to stop and uh, that worked for about a week <laughs> and then uh, what I did was I just put some small screws in there right at that line so that way you don't have to worry about it the screws are gonna hit the top of that uh, top of that housing I guess you call it and uh, you know then you know you're like right now it's closed uh, right now it's open that's about it. But what that gap gives you, we were talking about with the business card, is it gives you the ability to not have to fuss with it. You just up and down, you close it, open it. Uh, this isn't the prettiest. Looks a little shady, but I couldn't find anything that would give me something for, uh, you know, unless I made it homemade, but I didn't want to mess around with it. Some kind of a, uh, some kind of a hood of some kind. I, this is heating and cooling. This is all I could come up with. It doesn't look the best, but it's it's effective as hell. Uh, that's the the one radial, and then uh, the other arm saw. <clears throat> that's this one. The only configuration I could come up with because of the way my piping is in my situation is uh, you know, it comes up from here and it tees off to that one, and uh, I don't have enough room, you know, to do a something behind this. Uh, it just, I had to go up and over, up and over, and then back over, and then come come over here with this one. <clears throat> that's the only way I, uh, uh, room-wise, that's the only way I could fit that one in. Uh, this one's a little, eh, it's not too bad, because you know if you're running the left saw, this one's more than likely going to be closed. So if it's closed, you got the ability then to open this one. And then you got the dust collector here for the uh, planer and the uh, bandsaw and then inside the floor there goes to the table saw now this one's a little bit uh, I made the gate a little bit longer just cuz uh, it's in the middle of the underneath the saw and it's kinda kind of a pain in the ass to reach under there so far so this one I made I think this gate is a lot longer it's probably an extra four or five inches longer just so you don't have to kill yourself trying to reach under there to grab it you know, and sometimes I'll even use my foot and just kick it closed. Over here at the charging station, this will be where I use one of the cheap gates. Uh, because I have no choice, really. Just because of the, uh, I was talking about how when the gate's closed, there's no protrusion through the other side. Which is good for a situation like this where you're against a wall. So that is, uh, that's open gate and that's closed gate. And this one, I, I do got to get in there every, nah, not that often, because this only controls my sanders that are running over there. So the dust is very fine, and I don't think much of it gets trapped in those grooves. But you're talking about using one of these cheap gates for uh, something that throws a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, particles and, and heavy, heavy dust. Uh, it's a disaster. But for, for sanding, sanding dust, I think it does fine, because it, it doesn't get clogged that often. Maybe once a year I gotta mess with this one. But that would be a situation where you would use your, your cheap gates. Where you got a wall that's blocking you from not being able to use the homemade one. And that runs behind my little bench over here. And it goes to a Y. And I think now I'm reduced. I think now this is going, everything before was 4 inch. I think this goes to like a 2.5 or a 3 and it's a Y with flex flex line, like vacuum line almost. And uh, that port over there, we were I was showing you that uh, that opens all of both of these, which is fine because the volume is there. So if I'm just running the oscillator, it's also sucking off of this belt sander, but it does it does what it needs to do. It it takes the dust with it, no matter which one you're running. And down here, 
this is where everything pretty much comes together uh, the flex pipe is just because it's hard to reach areas and you could have been drilling for two weeks trying to get all this right but the flex line lets you get away from all of that that top one that's what feeds that blast gate against the wall there and then uh, the bottom one is the one that's the feed line that goes right through this through this wall cabinet wall and that goes right to the dust collector unit itself and this is this is a disaster in here but this is where you I store all my crap nothing fancy it's almost impossible to see but uh, just your regular Harbor Freight uh, single stage dust collector this is your feed line coming in to the impeller and then that's your exit the PVC is your exit and I have it in there uh, you know it sucks through there and then it blows out this way and uh, seeing as I don't have much room in here it pretty much just makes a uh, 90 and then it goes right behind the dust collector and it goes out out the wall and I'll go outside I'll show you I'll show you what I'm dealing with outside there but uh, as far as this dust collector goes she's still running she's uh she's probably about eight years old single stage I don't know what the CFM is on it but I think it's like 600 maybe just a one horse and uh, she gets the job done well here's what I got going outside as you can see uh, the big white box that box is pretty big I think it's a dock box for like boating uh, somebody was gonna throw it away and then at the top there the white bucket that doesn't count and then that top bin is uh that's where I keep my uh original collection bag I use that as like the vent uh, see the bottom cavity catches all the big chips and then that blow by this blow by pipe here lets uh you know at least I think it lets all the air with the fine dust travel up here and it gets caught in this second uh this is just a rubber made box but it's pretty good size at the top of it uh, at the top of this underneath this tarp here I got the lid for that blue box is on there and I got a bunch of holes drilled in the top of that lid and that lets the air come out because you got to let the air I think that's why it's pretty effective for uh, such a small dust collector is because uh, you got to let all that air out somehow okay I took off my uh, my tarp lid uh, this is something I found I think it's a furnace filter old ass furnace filter and then all there's all my holes that lets the air exit this thing I don't know really what it does but it seems like it catches some of the dust uh, when this thing's running actually uh, that tarp there will actually it'll like parachute up so you could tell that it's working because it, it raises uh, that that tarp there will raise up about you know a few inches and then usually there's not too much dust coming out of here I just use a rope to tie down that tarp this just keeps everything dry okay now this is the original bag that came with that dust collector your regular microfiber bag or whatever they call it uh, here's some kind of I had to somehow get that bag mounted to something to go to PVC so I just use one of them cheap gates but it always stays open just to give me a uh, some kind of couple to screw if you can see I got like a quarter inch self tapper right there just to hold this bag in and when this is running this bag is fully fully inflated it's really not much in it right now so either I got a clog or <laughs> uh, it's really doing its job down below all right now with the uh, top portion of the dust collector taken off nothing's really connected these are all connected here but uh, they just sit inside that hole that's another circle cut hole four inch I can get inside this baby there's my dust collector that's the guts of it that box is pretty good size it holds uh, when I clean this baby out you're talking three to four of the large lawn bags of sawdust nothing fancy just a box somebody was throwing away I tried to seal it best I could but this stuff never it always blows around and the seal tape is not that great but that's it uh, there's my line there coming from uh, 
coming from inside in the corner where that uh, dust collector is and that blows my, my thinking is is that it comes in through here because I've seen this thing full and I can see the pattern of the of the dust uh, this comes blows the dust in and I think it just collects in this general area it like whirlwinds almost and then the lighter stuff goes right out through here and that goes the dust dust and the air exits right out through into that uh the second stage i guess you can call it but that's that's pretty much it it doesn't look pretty uh it's not the best but it's the best for for me and uh cost wise it's uh it's effective